Um, my name is Jordi Mir, I'm a plastic surgeon. I work uh, here in Spain and majority my work is in Barcelona, so it's really a, a great pleasure uh, having the meeting here. I work for an aesthetic and aesthetic medicine and aesthetic surgery organization, it's Clinicas Dorsia. Um, from three years ago, we started with the high definition lipo. The high definition lipo is a new concept that was um, invented around 15 years ago. It was invented by Dr. Henry Menz uh, from the United States and the pioneer of this technique is Dr. Alfredo Hoyos. He's from Colombia, he's my, my master. Um, there are quite a, four kinds of liposuction nowadays. Uh, the first one is the classic one, the second one is the ultrasound, it's the lipo, it's the one that we're one, what I'm going to talk about. The other one is the laser assisted lipo and the power. Power assisted lipo is this kind of liposuction that is with vibration, suction and vibration. What you see in the ultrasound lipo? Well, it's a technology that uh, goes by high frequency ultrasonic waves. That what it does, it first emulsifies the fat. The fat is like liquid, then it's more easy to extract if the fat is liquid than if it's solid. Another advantage is this technique does not injure vessels, nerves, or other structures, so the post op is better than classic lipo. Um, if we say that classic lipo has two steps, infiltration and suction, ultrasound lipo has got three steps, but we want to call four because the last one, the retraction, we call like another step of the surgery. First step is the similar, it's the same as the classic lipo, the infiltration. What we use is a saline solution with adrenaline. We do not use lidocaine because, all the, because of the toxicity of the lidocaine and because all of our surgeries, we do about around 150 um, high def lipo per year, all of them are under general anesthesia. The second step is the most important one, is the fat emulsion with ultrasound. Um, the kind of ultrasound we, we use is laser, is the most known wall. And what the, prof, the ultrasound probe does is to emulsify the fat, but it needs the tumescent technique. So first we have to do it in the superficial and then deep. After that we do a liposuction, a normal liposuction. And we see after how the skin retracts. Why? Because the ultrasound has got two properties. The first one is what we said that emulsifies the fat. The second property is that it causes a skin retraction. Why? Because it is like a burn in the deep, um, in the deep epi um, dermis. Advantage of this? Well, the most important advantage is the definition. Why can we? Why we say that a classic lipo is okay if there is no de definition? Um, for the total definer surgeons, we say that good enough is never good enough. We have always go to try to have the maximum definition, so we can get the definition of the six pack, the pecs, the obliques, the arms, legs, jaws. The second advantage is that we have more extraction of fat and more regular. Why? Because the fat has been emulsified, so it's easier to suction uh, some the liquid instead of the solid. The third advantage is always is that allows lipofilling in other areas. Nearly always we associate lipofilling of the gluteus. The only thing that we have to be um, aware is that we are going if we are going to do lipofilling, we must not use more than 70% of the power of the ultrasound. Another advantage is the great, the greater skin refraction and best result. <coughs> Can you archive high definition lipo with traditional lipo? Yes, you can do it. You can do it with traditional lipo, but today is considered that ultra, the combination of the ultrasound with power assisted lipo is the most efficient system in the world. Well, this is our equipment. Uh, there we see um, the infiltration pan, the basic ultrasound machine, the probes, and two kinds of aspiration, and a wireless pedal. It's a common machine of ultrasound with many parameters that we have to um, 
be uh, that we can use in order to have a better result. The Ultrason probes are one, two, or three rings. In fact, there are also four or five rings, but we, the most work we use are the two and the three rings in case of primary surgeries, and the one ring in case of secondary lipo. The most important thing is before the surgery, as many aesthetic surgeries, the, the marking. Here we see we see the female marking. Um, we do many marks, blue marks for the um, deposits of fat, um, black marks for the lines. We ask the patient to contract, and um, green green line for where we do maximum lipo, red lines where we have to be careful with the lipo we're going to do, orange marking for the lipo filling. There is a very, very important point, is a maximum indentation point that is just below the last um, coastal arc, the last rib, and is where the waist is more, 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 more narrow. And also another important thing is the pinch technique, the, the pinch test. The pinch test must be skin muscle in the lateral, so um, lateral to the semilunaris line, and one centimeter in the medial, medial to the semilunaris line. The male marking, it's quite similar from the girl marking. One difference is that in the male marking, usually males ask us for doing the six pack as you always see in the results. In the female marking, we recommend only to do the vertical lines, the middle line and the semilunaris lines and the obliques here and here. We can also do high definition of the arm. Sorry. Here, marking the deltoid muscle, do a lot of feeling in the deltoid, and also high definition in the indentation of the triceps. We also have done labor filling of the biceps and the, in the triceps in selected cases. The surgical technique um, is first infiltration and then the ultrasound first dip and, and then superficial, and after that the lipo, and the last, the lipo filling. Here we see the infiltration is exactly the same as the infiltration of a normal lipo. The ultrasounds, first we do um, superficial. Why? Because the risk of burn. We need to make sense. So this is important to do first superficial. Also we mark the lines with the ultrasound. After superficial, we do the deep ultrasound. We do around one minute of ultrasound for 100 cc of infiltration. That's it, that if we infiltrate around, let's say, four liters, we do around 40 minutes of ultrasound of base. After that, we do the power liposuction. It's like this, a normal lipo helps by not only aspiration, also uh, rotational vibration or anteroposterior vibration. There are many kinds of power machines. High definition nearly always combine a lot of areas in order to give a more natural result. So we are we never do this alone. We are always are a team of two or three plastic surgeons operating in order to have less time of surgery. These surgeries have around three and a half, four hours. It's a total body. The last thing is the high definition. That's what we do in the lines. We're marking the middle line in this in this man, the semilunaris line, you see the transverse. It's an important technique to can do the transverse without more scars. And at the end, you put always, uh, well, we do the lipo filling at the end. And we use always grains. 
in in men, two grains in the tummy and one in the back, and in women, one in the back only. Some considerations pre and post. In May of last year, we did a clinical gate for all the country uh, where we, we have the patient selection criteria, the preoperative, preoperative, preoperative and postoperative criteria in order to have the lowest risk in this surgery. Pre we ask for women or men being below an IBC, below 30, 32, although perfect is below 25. Tobacco, it said less than 10 cigarettes per day. Better three, better none or three. No alcohol before, non um, anti non steroids, anti inflammatories or supplements. Be aware of vegans. And for foreign patients, about 10% of patients, or 5 10% of patients with radar foreigners. We asked for arriving um, 48, 48 hours before the surgery day, um, not eating during eight hours, um, heat blanket in the operating room, prophylaxis of um, thrombosis and everything. Post-op care, the girdle, we, kind of, we have a special high definition girdle, range, as I told you, great messages um, around daily for 10 days, perfect 20, but at least 10 days daily. Why? Because the fat has been emulsified, so the, the, the ultrasounds may that they will, if you don't do it range daily, you will have the seroma, that is the main complication of this surgery. And we close all the incisions, except elbow and below knee, there we leave open incisions. So, um, as we, we said, the first, um, let's say, eight, ten days, daily drains, and after the day number seven, eight, we start with radio frequency once per week, four weeks, because this creates more retraction and helps to the high definition to mark the lines. And um, also presentary helps, but be aware, if you have lipophilia, do not start press therapy before day 21. Complications. Hypothermia, anemia, um, alteration of the liver, um, CK increase, thrombosis, pain, seroma is the most important, seroma the most uh, frequent, burns, bruises, ischemia, necrosis, cellulitis or infection. A lot term, a lot term complications, asymmetries, well, we can use the ultrasound, radio frequency to help. It's very, very important. No, do not touch, do not reoperate before the six months. Inadequate marks, this is a very, very difficult complication. We have some patient that um, had um, operated by another team with inadequate marks and we have to do lipo filling and it's, it's very, very difficult to have a, a good result. Irregularities, residual fat, if there is residual fat, you can do a small lipo, but after six months, not enough definition. Well, you have, we have to say to the patients that around 5-10% of patients do not mark the lines. So these kind of patients don't do anything more. Don't go to try to mark the lines again. Residual skin laxity, well, we can help, be helped with radio frequency or not. We, maybe we can need a tummy tag post six months and fat reabsorption. And fat reabsorption. Um, we use in some patients the hyperbaric chamber, um, three stations on alternate days, the first week, and it's said to be that with the hyper ch hyperbaric chamber, it's seen, it's published that the fat reabsorption is less. Okay, let's see some results. This is the immediate positive result. Up we see the pre and down the post. We can see how in this woman, in this lady, we mark the medial line, the semilularis line. Which, how is the difference with the, with the um, waist? And in the back, how we do the lipo of not only the flanks, all the back, and we do some lipo filling. The lipo filling we do is between, we, we don't know, do a, a big quantity of fat, it's between 200 and 400 per side. Okay, and this is a, a 
curious case. This was a patient from America. She was uh, a girl, but she wanted a marking like a male. Why? You can see that she has the six pack. We did the six pack, although in girls we recommend only the vertical lines, only the medial line, the semi line, and the oblique line. But it's true that in some countries, like the United States or like in the north of Europe, um, women ask also for the six pack. Not in Spain, definitely, and not in, in Latin countries. And in the back, we see again the lipo, sorry, the back, the lipo of the back and lipo filling. As I told you, when we do lipo filling, or when we do high definition, nearly always we do um, lipo filling of the gluteus. Okay, this is another case similar. Another one, I want you here to say the change on the waist. Look, what we say, we can take more fat and with more regularity. Why? Because the fat is emulsified by the ultrasounds before the suction. And here we have a result. This was a lady, 50 years old. She had had a, a tummy tuck around one year before and he wanted a lipo with a high definition. This result around three months. This is a guy that he he plays a lot of sport, but she didn't mark like, he didn't mark the lines and he wants some marking. This is a woman that we do also breast augmentation at the same time and we define middle line, semi line and oblicus with the lipo and also inner thigh. The high definition of the man with marking of the six pack. And the difference between the other man we, we saw is that this man wanted a, a, a big marking. This is the result after six months. Obviously, this must be um, also helped by diet and sport, as you know. This lady with uh, lipo in the legs and uh, tummy. Another lady with a high definition. Uh, this lady not only had a high definition, she also had a mini time attack in order to strengthen the rectus again. This is a normal marking of a, in a female, marking only the vertical lines. The, the medial line that is supraumbilical, there is no medial line in umbilical, that's an important aspect. Also the semi line and the oblique. It's two weeks after a high definition in a man with six pack marking. This is uh, two days after a high definition. Very important always combine not the high definition with the um, lipophilic. And this is a six month result in a patient that had 300 cc of fat per site. This is a one month result after a high def in a patient that really plays sport, and here is six months in patient final result. Well, we're uh, really very honored because uh, two months ago it was published a list of the six nominees for the award High Definition Lipo Best Case, international award, uh, best case of the year, and we are um, nominated with this great case. Uh, Felipe Massignan is one of the best High Definition, uh, high definition High definition plastic surgeons in the world. Dr. Zvidrov is one of the, or maybe number one in Russia. Um, Emmanuel de la Cruz in Ohio. Carlos Lopez from Dominican Republic and Divasio from Argentina. Thank you very much. people prefer to do high definition and all these basic techniques or they still prefer to do the traditional methods? What's the proportion of cases you usually do? Well, uh, in, in our professional life things have changed since three, since three years ago because with the social media that in Spain we can show the results, these results we, we've seen that they are in our social media. Um, people do want 
uh, high def. Some of them want um, um, strong marks like this vision in the photo. Another one want more subtle marks, but all of them want, want high definition. This makes that that in the last year, in the last year, I think that I have only done one normal lipo, one normal lipo, um, and it was for a patient that uh, well, she she was she she I, I I told her I think that you will be better with an ultrasound lipo, but she wanted a, a classic lipo and that's respectable. But nearly all the lipos we do nowadays are ultrasound lipo. And they also wanted to ask you, what are the most commonly treated areas in, in male and female? Well, definitely in male, the six pack, the, the tummy, it's the one you need, Thomas, maybe? <laughs> well, um, I think I need that as <laughs> well. I have also another question. <laughs> um, I, it, it's yeah. quite similar to classical lipo. In, in male, it's the tummy, and in female, are the, um, the, the thighs the trochanteric area, the inner thigh, and also, also, uh, flanks and gluteus. But the fact is, in high def, if you, you can also, you can only do the tummy, yes, but what we recommend is to do the 360 degrees, to do all the circumferential, in order to have a natural result. Because if you have, for example, a pinch test of four centimeters in the flanks, and you don't only do the tummy, in the tummy you will have a pinch test of one centimeter, so it will be a big difference between the front and the back. That's not natural, that's not nice. You can do it, but we think that's not nice. Okay, thank you very much. I think that's all from my part. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I do have a question uh, to you, Jordi. Um, do you see many complications by fat grafting from the gluteal part? Because uh, Statistic-wise, in the last couple of years, as an outcome from one to two thousand five hundred, the thrombosis rates are even more in complication rates. Do you see that quite often, or and how do you do your procedure? Yeah, well, this is a very, very, very important aspect that has changed since one year ago. Nowadays, uh, I like a lot this question because um, it's very important. Nowadays, it's forbidden to do fat grafting inside the gluteal muscle. You cannot do it because of the risk of thrombosis. I had one two years ago. Fortunately, the patient was uh, some days, was three or four days in the care, intensive care unit and it's okay. But things have changed because of this problem. And what I do is two things. One is in the gluteal area, only superficial, and the fact is that I use very uh, few fat, between 200 and 400 per site. I have many, um, I know many plastic surgeons that use 800, 1000 per site. I don't do it also because here in our culture, um, women want more round fat and the problem is the, 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 the shape, not the volume. They ask more for the shape, for round shape, not the volume, so you don't need as much. With a superficial fat uh, lipofilling, lipo we have not seen any case of thrombosis. I like that question, it's very, very important. In other lipofillings, in other zones, but the anatom 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 anatomical structures are different, so there, this risk does not exist. You can, for example, in deltoid or in biceps or in pectoralis, you can do intramuscular, but not in gluteal, definitely. It's, it's very interesting because uh, we would say this technique, number one in the world, Fredo Hoyos, has changed completely, completely his technique from one year. Uh, I was operating with him two years ago and one year ago, and he has changed completely the technique. 